Hi, I'm Diane Rogers. I'm glad you're joining me in the kitchen. Well, during these times of no yeast and limited flour, I thought I'd teach some a series of quick breads. The first one I want to start with are scones. They're really good if made right. A lot of the ones you get in the store are kind of dry, hard, whatever. These are just right and everything about them is really good. They're not overly sweet. The variety you can make is just endless. You can make sweet scones, savory scones. I'm going to do a dried tart cherry with a chocolate chip in it. But as long as you have the basic recipe, then you can add what you want. The book that I work out of, you can find in the description on my Amazon storefront. Okay, so let's get going. Now, first of all, I do like to weigh everything, and this is best weighed in grams. So if you don't, these scales are so inexpensive now. If you don't have one, get one on Amazon. I think it was either 11 or 15 bucks, whatever, but it's well worth it. I use it for everything. And really important with certain baking things, especially this, because you want just enough flour and you want just enough moisture. Anyway, so on to the scale. What we're going to do is mix the dry ingredients and the butter in the processor because it'll cut the butter in easier and then I'll show you how to do it by hand then we'll mix the wet ingredients in but the wet ingredients gets done literally by hand so we're gonna start with 440 grams which is just shy a pound of all-purpose flour so if you can't find all-purpose flour I'll probably my next batch make with fresh ground wheat because this is getting really light if I have I don't have much left at all of that okay there's my 44 of that into that we add 55 grams of sugar which should take me to 495 and then we're going to add some baking powder now I'm buying, I, this is the end of my large baking powder, so now you have to buy small ones. You might buy an extra baking powder because I noticed that was quite thin too. So the, the baking powder is actually 24 grams. For this I'm going to tear the, my scale back to zero, and there's 12, and 23. There's my 24 grams of baking powder, and it's 4 grams of salt, so that's going to take me to 28. I'm using unsalted butter, so I might put in just a dash more to compensate for salted butter. I do like using unsalted so that you can control the amount of salt yourself. Then, into the processor it goes. And we're going to spin this up because this is mixing the flour for me. I want to mix this flour before I put the butter in because it just makes for a better distribution. And then, I've already weighed this out. We're going to take the butter, nice stone cold out of the refrigerator, and I am going to cut this in cubes. And the smaller the better because it just makes less work for the processor and you don't want to end up having to keep the processor running to form the ball because it won't make a tender flaky scone and so I first cut it that way then stood it up cut it that way now I'm going to cut it this way and into the bowl it goes so you're not making much of a mess and I'm not cutting all the way down on my on my counter and so you can see the small cube I'm getting with this and now I want to break it up and coat these little pieces with a little bit of flour just to make sure that it does not clump together and having said that, we'll run this. What I want to do also is pulse this. Because I do want some pieces of butter 
left in this mix. All right, so it looks like this. Okay, so now the processor is done. We're not going to use that. All right, I'm going to dump this in the bowl. Now, what we're going to do, now it's all by hand. And what I want to do is check this. You can see there's a couple larger pieces of butter. I want to rub these through with my fingertips. Put both hands in there and just rub it through because you're in effect sort of laminating this flour and this will create a better flake. So run it through a couple of times until you're sure all the large lumps are now flattened out and coated with flour on both sides. Only takes a minute. And also, by the way, don't be tempted to double this recipe. It's best done as a single recipe a couple times if you wanted to get yourself a big bowl. But it does get a little tricky working with a whole bunch of flour. So having said that, now I'm just looking at it and it looks pretty good actually. You can see, I'll tilt this bowl, you can see the flakes that the flour by rubbing it between my fingers has created and it looks just like a flake instead of a small pea like size okay so now what we're gonna do all right I use farm eggs and my friend that lives really close has chickens. I love going over there because the chickens are running around in the yard and I know she's feeding them really good. They are the happiest damn chickens. Having said that, they're all different sizes. Baking is relatively precise. So what you want to do is put a container on your scale and then crack. This calls for 82 grams of egg. All right, so basically a large egg, which is the baking standard, is 50 grams. So what we're going to do is not use all of this. So what I want to do is I'm going to crack. And look at, the, you can see easily the difference in the sizes. That's why it's important you have to weigh this. So I have zero on the scale. Crack it onto a flat surface first so that you get a nice, clean cut in the shell so you're not putting shell in there and then what you're going to do see and so those two eggs are 114 grams and we don't need all that so what I'm going to do is mix this together and then I'll be able to add just the amount of egg I need but mix it up really well. I don't want traces of egg white throughout this. You're kind of, well, mix, mix it well enough like you'd be making scrambled eggs. And you can tell when that's done by drawing the egg up through the whisk and it should come down in a thin stream, not stringy and you shouldn't see any white left. So that's how you tell when that's done. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to mix the wet ingredients. We're going to tear that scale out. And I'm going to pour in my 82 grams of egg. By doing this first, if you, perfect. By doing that first, you can pour back what you don't need if you over pour. And this will now be my egg wash that I need for the top. Okay, now we're going to add some buttermilk. And the buttermilk, the buttermilk is what helps give it its rise, the acidity in it. So this is 231 grams. So carefully pour in the 231 because you won't be able to pour this back because you don't want egg and buttermilk. I like to buy buttermilk by the half gallon because you can literally keep this. I know that 
you know, some might, the expiration date might be whatever, but I've held this stuff for six months and longer, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, but I do keep it cold. So there's my 231 grams, and I'm going to mix this slightly just to get a butter mix on that, right? Okay, now is where the hand part comes in. So we have our nice flaky dough, nice cold butter in there, and I'm going to make a slight well in the center. I am also going to rubber spatula this out because I want all of that. And I can give this a slight start in the middle, but after this is started, you don't want to overmix these. If you overmix these, they're going to become tough. So, having said that, that's about really as far as you can go with this. Now it's just time to get your hands in there. Now, this um, mix, you might want, you're going to be tempted to mix until you get a dough that comes together kind of like pie dough, but you don't want to do that. You want to leave it slightly loose because it will hydrate itself. So, see what I've got? It's a little bit shaggy, but I can take the bottom, put it on the top. Now I want to put in some, I'm going to make some dry tart cherry and chocolate chip. So what I'm going to do is take a handful of these dried cherries. Actually, I think we're going to put two handfuls in. And I'm going to put a handful. They're smaller chocolate chips. Bittersweet chip. Alright, here's what happened. Unfortunately, my camera cut off. But what I did, I just gently folded in the cherry and the and an orange. And then I patted it out, divided it in half, and formed them into two nice hamburger-like patties, shall we say. They ended up weighing 532 grams each. And once they were in those nice circles, I cut each into sixes because six is a really nice size. Too much, they're too big. And how much can you eat of these? They're really rich with the buttermilk and all the butter that's in them. Not much sugar. And then, after they're cut, put them on. These are the two pieces. After they're cut, put them onto the sheet tray. I egg wash them nice and even all the way around. And then I put some sugar in the raw on top of them. And the sugar in the raw still has the molasses in it. So I really like the appearance of these, plus I like the little texture that it leaves on top. Now these are going to go to a 350 oven for about 15-ish minutes. Actually, it's a 350 convection oven, and if you don't have a convection, it's actually a 375 degree convention oven. With fan, 350. Without a fan, 375. So, off to the oven they go. Make sure you preheat your oven before you put the scones in or any baked goods anytime you do that because you want that oven to build up heat inside so that you, when you open the door it doesn't lose all the heat right away. Anyway, the oven, I, I like to preheat my oven for at least 45 minutes before I do anything in it. Alright, so these just came out of the oven. Don't they look wonderful? They're nice and light and flaky and they're light as air but there is some substance to them. Anyway, they're just nicely golden on top. I suppose I could have gotten them a little more golden on top by putting them onto the top shelf. And this was done in the middle shelf, but the bottoms look good. And the way I was able to tell if they were done is if you press on them slightly and they pop back up, kind of like testing a cake, then they're done. Anyway, these are really good. Creme fraiche, sour cream, more butter, ah, but they're, they're just so many possibilities with these. You could make them savory by adding cheddar cheese. 
You could add any kind of seeds and grains, blue cheese, walnuts, almonds, um, fresh fruit in the summer. I made a lot of blueberry scones last summer and strawberry scones. Uh, if you use fresh, be careful not to make sure that it's nicely mixed first and then just fold them in gently. Or you can use frozen berries, but use them from frozen. Anyway, um, got raisins, currants, the possibilities just go on and on. Another combination that I like really like to use, especially with the cherry, but I didn't happen to have any, is white chocolate. And always look on the ingredients of white chocolate and see if it just has cacao and that's pretty much it and a little butter um, having said that make sure there's nothing weird in the ingredients and good white chocolate oh my god it melts in your mouth anyway I hope you give these a try because they really are easy you might have to try them once or twice technique technique and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave a couple out and I'm gonna freeze them I'm gonna do my waistline a favor and freeze some so that I can bring them out a couple at a time and warm them in the oven. Otherwise, I could go through a lot of these fast. So, that is another quick bread, sort of. Well, it is a quick bread. And hope to see you on the next episode of Breads Without Yeast. Please subscribe so you get updates when I post new videos, which is relatively frequently. And stay safe and stay healthy. Mm -hmm.